Hello and welcome to Nidhrania YouTube channel. You're watching another episode from the Game in a Nutshell series designed for explaining the board game rules. My name is Branislav Perec and today we're going to learn how to play the game called Wonderland's War from Druid City Games. To set the game up, shuffle these region scoring markers and place one into each of these five regions on the map. Choose one set of ally cards and for the first game you can choose the cards with this letter A and place this Forge card next to the chosen set. Then shuffle these Wonderlandian cards, place the deck face down and draw the first three cards face up. Based on its type, place either the Wonderlandian chips or the Wonderlandian meeples on the chosen cards. Shuffle this deck of Tea Party cards with number one and deal cards face up to all spaces at the table based on the actual player count. I'm going to set up a three player game, so I'm going to fill in these spaces, not this one or this one for four or five player game. Place this starting battle standee in the red keep, then roll the shard die and move the standee as many regions clockwise as is the number of shards on the die. Shuffle the deck of quest cards and place them near the game board as well. Then each player chooses a faction and takes all the components of that faction, all the supporters, castles, four faction artifact chips placed in these spaces on your player board. These are specific for each faction. And also take four supporters and place them on these designated spaces. Four discs are placed on these spaces on the faction board and the fifth one on the one space of the leader strength then take four starting faction chips, two more remaining faction artifact chips, one forge chip, and then the starting double madness chip and two single madness chips. Take them all and place them into your bag. Place the shield token this side up in this space. Each player places the last disc on the starting space of the victory point track and the faction cube at the start of the battle track. Then draw two quest cards secretly look at them, keep one and shuffle the other into the quest deck. Finally, take the wager cards. All players place their leaders at the head of the table, randomly choose the starting player, then based on this table in the rulebook, players receive starting number of shards. So in our example, Alice would receive three shards and we're ready to go. In Wonderland's War, each player represents a faction in Wonderland and strives to become the new ruler of the Wonderland. The game is played over three rounds and each round has two phases, first the Tea Party phase and then the War phase in the Battle Regions. During the Tea Party, players will place units into regions and gather these ally chips from Tea Party cards. During the War phase, Battles are resolved in each region and at the end of the battle the player with the highest strength and still any units present in a region will win the battle and gain victory points from that region. The game ends after three rounds and players score victory points primarily from winning battles in regions, but also from quest cards and building castles in Wonderland. The player with the most points is the winner. Each round starts with the Tea Party. The objective of the Tea Party is to place units in regions and gather the ally chips. The first step of the Tea Party is to set the table. For the first round, this is already done during setup. For subsequent rounds, if there are any cards left from previous Tea Party, you would discard those cards. Then shuffle the deck of Tea Party cards for the next round and deal them to all the spaces for the current player count. Finally, you would place the leaders back at the head of the table. Then, in the first round of the game, the starting player is the first player to act and then other players in a clockwise direction. In round two or three, the player with the lowest number of victory points would go first. Then, on your turn, you take your leader, move it any number of spaces clockwise to any chair with the card, take the benefits from that card. I will explain all those icons in just a minute. Then you would take the card and keep it in front of you. Then other players in a clockwise direction do the same. They move their leader 
take the card and take all the rewards from that card. And as long as you have fewer than four cards in front of you, you will continue with the tea party. Now, when moving around the table, you reach the head of the table, you have to pause there, take the shard die, roll that die, and take that number of shards from the general supply into your personal reserve. In general, you want to avoid taking these shards. Then, while still at the head of the table, if there are any empty spaces at the table, empty spaces without any card and without any leader, fill in those empty spaces with the new cards and continue your movement until you reach the new chair with the card, again repeat the process. Then, when you already have four cards in front of you, move your leader to any region on the map and your tea party is over. Don't forget that your leader has a special ability which can only be used during the tea party. So Alice is actually the only character which moves counterclockwise during the tea party phase, not clockwise as I've just showed you, but she follows all the same rules as other characters. Now let me go through the rewards on the tea party cards. First, if the card depicts any ally chip, take the exact chip into your bag. And note that some chips have two versions, the one with one dot is the weaker version, the one with two dots is stronger version of the chip, so you have to take the exact match, in this case it would be the weak version. If you take a card with this reward, you can take any ally chip with one dot, so the weak version of the ally chip. When you take the card with this symbol, you can take a new Wonderlandian. Choose any of the face-up cards and place it next to your faction board. And if it comes with chips, you place those chips into your bag. If it comes with the meeple or figure, you place that figure into any region. It can be even the region where you have no units yet. Now, speaking about units, if the card has any unit icon with a number in the top left corner, you can take that many units from your personal reserve, so not from the faction board yet, but from your personal reserve, and place them into one single region. These units are not only your supporters, but also these Wonderlandians, when they would be defeated in battle, and they would be placed back into your reserve. When you deploy units, since we have two units here, I can take one supporter and one Wonderlandian. Again, they would have to go into one single region together. If you take the card with two unit icons, treat each icon separately so these two units can go into one region and these two units might go into a different region. When you take the card which has the shard icon in the top right hand corner, take the shard die, roll it and take the number of shards equal to the symbol shown on the die. And by the way, these large shards count as five small shards. And when you have the shard die icon on this black card, you can either take the top effect without taking the bottom effect, or you take both of them, but in that case you have to roll the shard die and take the shards. Then this icon means that you can take one of your faction discs, move it away from the faction board and unlock the ability. You can unlock those abilities in any order you want. When you take the card with this symbol, you may increase the leader's strength by one. If the strength would be at six, that's a maximum level, you can discard a shard. When you take the card with this effect, you may take one new quest card. If you take the card with this effect, you can take two quest cards and choose one and shuffle the other one back into the deck. Now, this icon indicates that you can take one of your castles and place it in any region where you don't already have a castle. You can have maximum one castle in each region. Castles add strength in battle and they are worth victory points at the end of the game. The number of victory points depends on how much you forge this particular track. Then when you take the card with this icon, if you would have broken shield, the shield will be flipped to this side, you can flip it back to the unbroken side. When you take these split cards, you can take the top effect or the bottom, not both. And finally, this icon indicates that you can discard a shard from your reserve and with this one you can find a madness chip in your bag and return it back to the general supply. In addition, some cards may have a text indicating another effect which you need to carry out. 
When all players have four Tea Party cards and they place their leaders into regions, the Tea Party is over. Then each player adds one single Madness chip into their bag. And then the player with the most shards adds one additional single Madness chip into their bag. And then discards half of their shards rounded up. In this example it would be three shards. If players are tied for the most shards, all tied players gain one additional madness and discard half of their shards. Players gain these madness chips simultaneously and if there are not enough chips for everyone, then nobody gets these madness chips. And if you don't get a madness chip, you also don't discard the shards. During the war phase, you would resolve battles in the regions, starting with the region with the starting battle standee and then continuing in a clockwise direction. In each region, the player with at least one unit will take part in the battle. Units are supporters, leaders and potentially wonderlandians. Castles are not counted as units, so if a player only has a castle in a region, like in this case, they would not participate in the battle in that region. If there are any players who don't participate in a battle, let's say in this region, if we wouldn't have the pink player present, those players may bet on the winner of the battle in that region. They would place these wager cards face down in front of them. These wager cards essentially have faction on the other side, on the face up side. And if that faction wins the battle in that region, the player wins any weak ally chip from the supply. If that faction doesn't win the battle there, the player would have to gain one shard. Now, before the battle starts, we need to calculate the starting strength of each participating player. For the sake of explanation, let's say these are all the units in this pool of tears region. Supporters don't add any strength, so the pink player will start with zero strength. Castles add 2 to the strength of the player, so the purple player has no strength for the supporters, but 2 strength for the castle. And the strength of the Wonderlandians and the leader is determined by the Wonderlandian card and by the position of the marker on the leader strength track. So here we have 2 plus 1, that's 3 for the blue player. Now we can start the battle. All players simultaneously draw one chip from their bag and during the war phase you may not peek into your bag. So once you draw the chip, place it in the first slot, first available space in this active chip area. If you would draw any ally chip, resolve the abilities of that chip. Those are these abilities on the ally cards. If applicable, resolve any unlocked faction abilities and then increase your battle strength by the number on your chip, potentially modified by various effects. Remember, all players do this simultaneously. Then proceed to the next round of the battle. So again, you would draw another chip from the back, place it in the active chip area and resolve the effects of the chip. Now, when you draw the madness chip, take it from the active chip area and place it on the madness track and lose as many units as printed on the chip. This double madness chip shows two units, the single madness chip shows one unit. When you discard units, you have to discard supporters and Wonderlandians first before you would remove your leader. If present, your leader would be the last unit removed from the region. These supporters or Wonderlandians that you lose from the region can be redeployed again during the next tea party. If you have an unbroken shield and when you draw the chip, you draw the madness chip. You can use that shield to protect from effects of that madness chip. Flip the shield face down to the broken side and return the madness chip back to your bag. That will be your battle turn. You would not draw another chip in this turn of the battle. Then after drawing and resolving the madness chip, if you still have any units remaining in the region, you may continue in the battle. However, if you would lose all your units in the region, you would be busted. That means you would be out of the battle, your battle strength would be reduced back to zero, all the chips that you would have in the active chips area would be exhausted and placed in the exhausted chips area, and your shield, if it's broken, 
it will be flipped back to the unbroken side. On the other hand, when you draw a chip and it's a madness chip and your madness track would be now full, you would immediately refresh your back. All those madness chips from the madness track and all the chips which are in this exhausted area would be placed back into your bag. However, you are not busted. That means if the shield is broken, it remains broken. And if you lose the supporter or supporters for that madness chip, but still have any supporters remaining in the region, you continue in the battle. Only when you draw the madness chip and your madness track is full, but you will get busted at the same time, because you would lose your last supporter in the region, you would first take all the chips from the active area and place them in the exhausted area, and then you would refill the bag. So all the madness chips and chips from the exhausted area would go back into your bag. That would also refresh your shield, but you are obviously out of the battle. Then after you make the first draw, which is mandatory, on your subsequent draws, you may decide to hold. In that case, you would reach into the bag, but when pulling out, you would show an empty hand. That means you would not resolve any effects, but you would not be able to draw more chips in the battle, so your participation in the battle ends. But your strength in the battle remains unchanged, so if you are in the lead and other players would hold as well, or even bust, you may still win the battle. You would just not be able to increase that strength later in that battle. And the reason why you would want to hold is, for example, to preserve your supporters in the region, or if you are on the space like this, you would like to forge, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Or maybe you want to fulfill a quest which is related to the battle in that region. And in case you are in the lead and you are the only player remaining in the battle because other players either halted or busted, you must halt as well. You may not continue increasing your strength. So if there's only one player remaining in the battle and winning, or any player or players reach the last space on the battle track, the battle is over. The winner of the battle scores the number of victory points for that region for that particular round. So in the first round this would be 4 victory points, in the second round as well, in the third round that would be 12 victory points. In addition, the winner may also place a castle in that region if they don't have the castle in that region yet. Then the runner-up, the player in the second place, scores half of those victory points, so 2, 2 and 6 in this example. In case of a tie for the first place, which may happen when both players have the same strength or they both reach or multiple players reach 25 points on the battle track, all the tied players score victory points for that round or the castle, not both. And there is no scoring for the second place. If there would be a tie for the second place, split that reward for the second place evenly. So for example, in the third round, if the second place would score six points, both players would score three victory points. If needed, round up. If the region is uncontested, then the player in that region is automatically the winner of the battle. But in this case, that player may choose either the victory points or the castle, not both. And in case all players bust, there is no winner and no victory points are awarded. Now, if you have a quest where the feed part of that quest is related to the battle in this particular region and you manage to achieve that feat, place the card face up in front of you into your play area. At the end of the game, you will score three victory points for that feat. And this is the part which is scored at the end of the game, the end game objective. If you also fulfill that part of the objective of the quest card, you gain three victory points for this part, three victory points for this one, and three victory points as a bonus. So nine victory points total. And by the way, you may achieve maximum one feat per one battle. Then if you have a forging chip in your active chips area, or your strength at the end of the battle is on the space with this hammer symbol. As this forge card indicates, after battle you may forge one active chip. So in our example we may do one, two, three, so up to three forges. The forge take one chip from the active chips area and it can even be the forging chip, doesn't have to be but can be, 
and place it in any of these forging tracks to the leftmost empty space. For example, I place it over here. After that, you get the reward from that space. In this case, I would even get additional supporter into my personal reserve. Then these symbols are the same symbols as on the Tea Party cards, so you know those symbols. In case there is a reward in between spaces, you have to have the chips in all those spaces. And this bottom track scores victory points for your castles. If you would have a chip here, you would score four victory points at the end of the game. Here you would score five or six victory points for each of your castles on the map. Finally, here you would score four victory points immediately. And if by forging you complete the entire forge track, you take this artifact chip and you place it directly into your bag. And finally, if there are any wagers for that battle in the region, resolve those wagers. If the player wins the bet, that player would gain any weak ally chip if the player loses the wager, they gain one shard. In case of a tie, or when all players bust and there's no winner, those wager cards have no effect. Then at the very end of the battle, as the last step, perform the cleanup. Move all the chips from the active chips area to your exhausted area. That means the madness chips stay where they are, they are still on the madness track. The cubes on the battle track are reset back to the starting space and you can resolve the battle in the next region clockwise. After resolving battles in all regions, roll the shard die and move the starting battle standee that many regions clockwise, and this would be the region where the first battle will take place in the next round. Players take all their chips from the exhausted area and put them back into their bag. However, shields don't repair. If they're broken, they remain broken. And the same applies to the Madness chips, they stay on the Madness track. Then if there are any Wonderlandian cards face up, shuffle them back into the deck and draw three new cards face up. And since you shuffle those cards back into the deck, some of the cards from the previous round may actually show up in the next round as well. The game ends at the end of the round three. In addition to the victory points you score over the course of the game, you add victory points for your castles and you score victory points based on how much you forged on that last track. In this example it would be 5 points for each castle. Then you score victory points for the quests and then 1 victory point lost for each shard still in your reserve. After that the player with the most points is the winner. So that's how we play Wonderland's War. If you have any questions or comments, please put them into the comment sections below. I'll do my best to answer as many as I can. If you like the series, please subscribe. You can even support the channel on the Patreon page. You've been watching Game in a Nutshell. My name is Branislav Beret and hope to see you next time. I would like to thank everyone who has ever supported the channel and especially the current supporters listed on this page. If you too would like to support the channel in creation of videos like this and other video tutorials and other content on this channel, please visit the patreon.com slash